Yes, it's me, and it's half past six. It's that time of night. Now, before, let's just adjust this. I had a few comments that they couldn't hear me, so can you hear me? Like, is everything okay? Can you hear my voice and all that stuff? Because I can't really, it's an iPad, and I can't really fiddle around with the um, microphone. So, right, do you want me to start doing this thing? Um, Okay, I'm going to just go through these questions, and there's a lot of them about the book, you know, but that's the idea, isn't it? And I'd like to thank Jethro Tull there for standing in for me at the very beginning, or standing up for me. Okay, here we go. This is from Jose Nuno. Been a fan since 1987. I was in high school. I'm wondering... If you all would consider collaborating with any other groups and do an album together, i.e. The Cure or The Church. Hope you all have a good week, etc, etc, etc. Beautiful music you've given us, etc. Loads of emojis. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> That's the short answer. I'm not really that bothered about doing that. Um, next question. Martin Judge. Oh yeah, this one's a bit awkward. Will, do you feel Mac is using the Bunnymen name just as a way of getting his songs to the wider public? A band should write songs together in one place, working on ideas. One or more I've come up with. Sometimes I feel Mac just regards you as a session guitarist. Well, so do I, so that's the answer to that one. <coughs> Will, which album or songs had the most change due to demands of the record label? Oh, okay. I think the cutter was pretty um, pretty different from uh, the original one. I know they didn't like that one, but they didn't like much. We were always, uh, you know, fighting our corner kind of thing for trying to get it to sound how we wanted it to sound. And, um, yeah, it's a bit of a difficult one. They, um, yeah, they dragged us in the office one time and played as Big Time, you know, by Peter Gabriel. I said we wanted to sound like this. It's like, what do you want about? <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, that didn't go down too well, so we uh, we stormed out. What was your favourite venue to perform in? Uh, it's got to be Barrowlands in Glasgow. It's just the best place in the world to play. And a lot of bands will tell you that. It's, um, it's the crowd are just amazing. It's not like it's dead plush or fancy or anything. But it's got this great spring sprung dance floor. Um... I want somebody to say they can't hear me. Why can't you hear me? I'm being very loud. I'll get closer. Or I'll speak up. Can you hear me, mother? Um, yeah, so Barrel Lands in Glasgow because the crowd are, br are brilliant. Uh, which bands, particularly Merseyside based, do you think you influenced and how? I don't think any really, you know. I can't think of anybody that's been influenced by us from Merseyside. Maybe the Pale Fountains, but that's about it. What are your thoughts on electric... Oh, they'll never see what that, how that was by. Okay. The favourite venue was Bertree, Bernice Healy. And uh, which songs had most changed? You know, the record company got us to change was Richard Parra. And Martin Judge did the one about Mac. And Paul Thomas... Which bands, particularly Merseyside, do you, do you think influenced and how? Okay, I'm on to Rob Rom. What are your thoughts on Electrofiction? It was a great time. I really enjoyed it and it was good to rock for a change. Is there a new ba Bunnyman album on the way, Will? Uh, I think so. How is Les and when did you last see him? Saw him a few years ago, he came over. He lives in Melbourne, Australia now. Um, you know, we're always like chatting on WhatsApp and all that sort of stuff. And for all I know, he's pretty good. You know, he enjoys himself over there. It's a nice place where he lives. Sunny all the time, obviously. Oh, what's that? Special communication. I'll turn this off. Okay. <coughs> uh, 
Um, right, this is uh, that was from Lee Waller. Uh, Sneg dig Tetlik, I don't know how you pronounce that, but it looks like somebody from Iceland or something. Is there a new Glide project to be released shortly? Well, I've actually written and recorded a new Glide record, but I just can't be bothered doing it. I, you know, it's it's all the arson around with getting it pressed and all that. I like making them, I just don't like kind of putting them together as a record, you know. Okay, Stephen Pendlebury. Oh, you've done that one. That was just a new album on the way, Will. Um, I should cross these out, so I know where I'm up to, shouldn't I? That'd be good. Right, Mike Neal. Do you know Peter just formed a new band right before he died? Well, yeah, it was the uh, Sex Gods, wasn't it? Um, big deal, so what? You know, there's more. There's room for more than one band. Um, since you started working in a department store kitchen, what's your favourite cuisine? God, Italian probably. Hi, well, big fan from Northern Ireland. I was. This is Conan. Oh, that other one was Mary Mano Sweeney. This is Con Connell McBride. Hi, well, big fan from Northern Ireland. I was just wondering, have you ever considered singing on any Bunnymen tracks, or even sung solo? And if no, why not? Because if I sung. Things would die. It's I, I can't sing. It's just awful. It's like uh, the worst people that go on. Britain's Got Talent. Okay. Uh, right. Rushwin Casida. Will Les Pattinson ever rejoin the Bunny Men? Soon? Question mark. Very unlikely. He lives in Australia. He's quite happy to be out of it, really. Andrew Johns, who are your biggest guitar influences? Well, I can easily do that one. These two fellas, this fella, Richard Lloyd, and this fella, Tom Verlaine. And all my favourites. And the reason, yeah, oh, this is interesting. See the way they've all got Fender amps there, like the shiny boxes at the back they're fender amps and that's why we all got fender amps for uh when we started when we got our first kind of money in you know um because we love television i do right that's that one gone paul robinson how good is action woman by the litter well it's great isn't it it's one of the best garage band songs ever do you have any regrets about Mac? This is Andrew Arthur J. About Mac, have the Mac less bunny man. Personally, I loved it. Prove me wrong. It's one of my one of your finest records. I imagine Mac doesn't approve. No, he doesn't approve. He hates it more than anything. And uh, but you know, we did what we did. And, you know, it just happened, didn't it? Um, yeah, no, it's uh, I you know I I still like the record. Um, no, the singer bloke was was great. You know, he was a lovely fella. And Thorn, what good memories do you have with Station Road, Melling, loads? It was just a fun place to grow up. Um, going down the canal and you know, when I never really did any skiving off school. It was uh, it was just um, you know, school was better than being at home really. Um, and that was Tam Dean Byrne. Oh no, this one. Oh, this is, that was Alec and Thorn. Right, this is Tam Dean Byrne. Did you write of the trip to the Soviet Union in the year 1983? It was 1983 we went. Uh, where we met. It's all a mad snowy swirl of vodka champagne to me. On trains and planes and three Soviet cityscapes. With all your scouser comrades looking forward to reading it. Well, no, it's not. It's not mentioned in this, um, this, this one. You know, it'll probably come up in the next one or the one after that. Yeah. If you, this is uh, Ken Logan. If you could have played with any other band, who would have been? Oh God, that's a hard one. I've got so many bands that I love. Mm. I don't know. It's difficult. 
you know, I was thinking I would have ruined any other bands. This is Martin C. What happened to the club Euphoria that you founded in the Docklands of Liverpool in the early 90s? Well, you, it wasn't a club, it was just a warehouse that me and Les had bought cheap. And we put on a couple of raves and stuff. Uh, so it wasn't really a club. And it's still there, it's like derelict. Somebody else owns it now. Okay, this is Ray Arroyo. Do you recall when you toured with New Order and switched headliner positions each night? Was there competition to see who put on a better show? Definitely. It was uh, our mission to blow them off every night, as we used to say. And it was their mission to blow us off every night. And um, we succeeded quite a lot. Okay, this is uh, Lorraine English. Lorraine English. Which are your top three favourite Bunny Men songs to play live and why? Over the Wall. Um, over the Wall. Killing Moon's always great because, you know, the reaction of the crowd and everything. I, lo I love that. Uh, so. Maybe Back of Love, but we've stopped doing it now. So, I don't know. Rescue? Okay, Grant Smith. Any more Poltergeist music coming up? Your Mind is a Box is one of the best instrumentals I've heard in a very long time. Uh, it's difficult to do with Les living in Australia. So, kind of like, don't really want to do it without him. But I suppose I could do, but it feels a bit weird. So, no, that's the answer to that one. Not at the minute. Mike O'Hara. Can you mention a few of your favourite guitarists ever? Well, I've already mentioned Tom Verlaine and Richard Lloyd. You know, obviously, you know, Pagey. Pagey is one. Um, Krieger. Krieger. No picture around here. But, you know, the, uh, a lot really like Brian Jones, you know. And this this record here is uh, it's an interesting fact. It's got the uh, you know the little three D, the three D kind of cover where we move and everything. And Pete the Freight has bought me this for my birthday. And it's actually mono. It's all backwards, but it's mono. Okay, where are we up to? What is the secret to your lockdown sourdough success? It's, you know what, it's dead easy to make sourdough. I don't know why everybody makes a big thing, thing out of it. it. It's the starter that just takes the time. Once you've got the starter, you're laughing. You, you can't really go wrong. 